Coach in the Fight here with a new moon report for the third month of the sacred calendar. That is the month Sivan. Now you're looking here at a spreadsheet table from data that I collected from the U.S. Naval Observatory a while back. Uh, something seems to be going corrupt with their website these days, so I'm glad I collected this data which shows that the new moon should fall on the 23rd of the month of May. So in order to get secondary confirmation, I'm going to jump over to a website called renewedmoon.com and show that they are also expecting to see a new moon on the 23rd, the evening of the 23rd. It is calculated mathematically at this point, so, so you could be... 95% sure that you'll actually see a moon. However, those Levitical priests, they will be still out there looking for it, ready to blow their horns when they see it. But the thing about the third month of the sacred calendar, like I said, it's called Sivan, and maybe pronounced Sivan, I'm not sure. Um, it is a very significant month. Now, it's the ninth month on the civil calendar which is that calendar that starts in September but it is the third month on the ecclesiastical calendar what that all means is um, it basically had uh, two calendars in in the Bible one was a harvest calendar and one was a civil calendar um, but when you read over in the book of Exodus um, we were told to go using uh, the ecclesiastical calendar which put uh, the first month falling with the spring equinox over there. So this is actually the third month of the year. The significant thing about the third month of the year it is it has the feast days of Pentecost in it. The feast days of Pentecost fall in the third month of the year. And I'm going to show you some scriptural texts over there. Um, in a second on how we know that it falls in the third month of the year but I wanted to show you something right quick when you pull up your Gregorian calendar which is the calendar that is probably on your wall the calendar that you use in order to know which days you are supposed to go to work and go to school that calendar puts Pentecost on the 31st of May Sunday the 31st of May um, but I do want to point something out about that calendar particularly that it falls on Sunday now let me show you something this is for the year 2020 but if we look at 2019 it falls on Sunday 2018 it falls on Sunday 17 falls on Sunday talking about Gregorian calendar Six, uh, 2016 was Sunday Notice this pattern here, 15 was Sunday, 14 Sunday, 13, and I could keep going on and on all the way back in history showing you that according to our Gregorian calendar, the uh, Feast of Pentecost or the Day of Pentecost falls on Sunday. But if you know anything about the uh, sacred calendar, the lunar calendar, you know that that's impossible. There's no way that that feast day would actually keep popping up on Sunday because the days change. The Gregorian calendar and the sacred calendar don't match up. So this is what I wanted to show you about the, the Pentecost on a Gregorian calendar. This is over here on Google also when I put in how is Pentecost calculated. It says the day of Pentecost is seven weeks after Easter Sunday. Yep, they're using Easter in order to calculate the uh, date of Pentecost. And if you know anything about the scripture, you know that they're not supposed to be using Easter in order to calculate the date of Pentecost. They're actually supposed to be using the Feast of Unleavened Bread in order to calculate the date of Pentecost. This is why a lot of people are concerned about what's going on in the church these days is because man has gone on to change the dates whereas before let me show you over here in the uh, um, Septuagint of the Bible um, it's telling you how to calculate the Feast of Pentecost and it's telling you to go based on the um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread 
Now, we did a video on this not too long ago. Um, it's called uh, Pentecost Septuagint Proclaims Different Date than King James Version. Uh, it's where we went in using the Septuagint of the Bible um, to get uh, a better understanding of when this date is actually supposed to fall. And there is some slight differences between what the King James Version says and what the Septuagint says. Namely, the King James Version tells you to start counting um, with the date of Pentecost ending after the Sabbath day, whereas the Septuagint doesn't say the word Sabbath day, it just says um, the seventh week instead of Sabbath day and so it actually changed the date a little bit and gives you a more accurate date. Um, which shouldn't be surprising if you know about the Septuagint, knowing that you know it's the same uh, translation of the Bible that people like John would have translated from. Matthew, Mark, and Luke would have also used the Septuagint when they was writing the New Testament of the Bible. It was actually in existence, you know, hundreds of years before the Messiah came came to Earth. So back over here to what I was saying about how our date of Pentecost is calculated on the Gregorian calendar we we just know it's just flat out an error based on the fact that they're using Easter Sunday and that's why every Pentecost on your calendar every year is going to show up on a Sunday and that's just not the case but anyway um, like we said we covered all of that in that uh, video over there um, on the Pentecost and Septuagint you can go check out that video but we are going to put out additional videos like we do every year related to the feast days telling you exactly what date um, um, to look forward to celebrating the feast of Pentecost so go ahead and hit the subscribe button or that bell button if you haven't done so already so you can get those videos when they come out the thing about Pentecost is this, it is a little bit more complicated to know when the exact date is uh, than the other feast. The other feast days like Passover, Unleavened Bread, Tabernacles, Atonement Day and the rest they all have a very specific date whereas um, like we mentioned a little earlier there there is a little bit of um, uh, room for adjustment when it comes to the date of Pentecost and let me show you why I believe that is now here you're looking at um, a outline of the date of Pentecost from various books including what you see about the date of Pentecost in the book of Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Leviticus but it also includes books like Jasher which has a lot to say about the date of Pentecost and Jubilees which also talks about events that happened on the date of Pentecost and so what I've done in, in what you're looking at here let me blow it up just a little bit maybe you can see it like I went in and looked at okay what went on with Noah in the date of Pentecost what went on in Abraham uh, with the date of Pentecost um, this giving you an example when it comes to Noah um, in the third month of the sacred calendar is when Noah actually got off of the ark if you remember they got on the, the ark maybe a year earlier maybe they got on the ark a year earlier and they stayed on that ark throughout the 40 days of rain and several months after as the earth was completely covered in water and uh, even after they had sent the dove out and you know and landed on dry land they even stayed on the ark even longer than that and but the date that they actually emerged and came off of the ark was actually on the new moon which would have actually been tomorrow since today is the 23rd of May it would have been on the 24th of May 2020 is the date that they would have actually got off of the ark and so we wrote down that kind of information um, from each book we found we found that over there in Jubilees chapter 6 and we wrote down this information that we found from all of the books uh, 
We also found information from what went on in Abraham's life over there. You can read that. What went on in Jacob's life in the third month, the month of Sivan. You can see that. Um, what went on with Moses and the children of Israel as they left Egypt. Uh, we find a lot of that over in books like Exodus and stuff like that. And we even have information down here on in the books of Kings and some of the Kings. Um, you can see coming out of Second Chronicles in the book of Esther, uh, what happened in the third month, um, these all third month events. Now, we're not going to cover anything else on these uh, particular um, uh, verses that came out of Kings. So if you want, you can pause and, and check those out. But let me show you what I did with this information. Okay, so what I did was I took all of the, that information from those various books, all happening in the third month, and put them on a spreadsheet table and sorted them. Sorted them by the date that the events happened. And I want you to notice how a, a pattern emerges from the events that take place in the third month and showing you why it is kind of difficult to know exactly when Pentecost um, um, would have occurred like you read over in the book of Acts and how the apostles were there meeting and the Holy Spirit came down on them well the book of Acts doesn't tell you the exact date that that happened it just says the date of Pentecost but when you look at the scripture, you, you, you see that, you know, that could have been a different, it could have been a number of days. Let, let me show you what I'm talking with. Just bear with me for a minute, for a little while. You know, this is Hermes Academy. We always do our own research over here. And by doing our own research, you know, it doesn't really come out, you know, as professional and as, you know, polished as those people who are just taking rehashed information and, you know, regurgitating it with their own flair or whatever um, you're looking at the source of this information when you look at it over here in Hermes Academy so it is a bit rough so just bear with me um, but looking over here again we have this information sorted it's not perfectly sorted because you see here Noah got off the ark falls on the second event here but what this is showing you is these things that happen on the new moon on the first day of the third month you got Noah getting off of the ark but then you have Abraham when you look over there in the book of Genesis chapter 15 verses 12 through 21 you have Abraham when he had his dream um, which included the 400 years of slavery that everybody is talking about, that prophecy that, that, that occurred then. And when Abram was told, you know, how he would, you know, these different things would happen to him. You can read about that in Genesis chapter 15, uh, verses 12 through 21. But that occurred on the new moon of the third month. Um, you find you find proof of it in the book of Jubilees. You'd have to jump over to the book of Jubilees, chapter 14 and verse 1 to know that this is when the dream occurred. But you can read about the dream over there in Genesis chapter 15. Uh, I know that's a little bit confusing, but when you see these uh, these verses given here at the end of each one of these events, that's where the information is referenced from, even though they may be pointing to a different verse over in the King James Version that you can get it. Anyway. Uh, leave a comment down there if, if any of this gets too confusing and we'll help work some of this out maybe even uh, get it cleared up in a future video if we have to do so um, that reminds me guys go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't done so already it's easy to uh, do it now and trying to remember at the end but anyway let's go on um, jump it over in the book of Jubilees and chapter uh, 44 verse 1 you start talking about Jacob and this is Jacob, or whose name had been changed to Israel by the time you get to Jubilee chapter 41. What's going on here is this is after um, the uh, his sons had went into Egypt to buy corn and they had found Joseph there. And Joseph has sent for Jacob to move into Egypt. And so he had all of the... Um, 
uh, wagons and chariots and all of that that was coming to get Jacob's entire household and bring him back to Egypt. Well, you can imagine Jacob was a little bit concerned about that because he had started remembering dreams that he had had and some visions that his forefathers had had about going into Egypt. So he was real hesitant about going into Egypt. So he didn't go right quick. This all happened on the new moon of the third month, but he didn't run off into Egypt right quick. You can see if you read over in um, the book of Jubilees, you can see that before he actually went into Egypt, he he tarried around a little bit. It wasn't until the uh, seventh day of the third month that he made a sacrifice. And then he even waited an additional seven days before he went into Egypt. And this, I believe, clarifies um, why Pentecost is so, so difficult to nail down. I think this clarifies what's actually going on in that third month where you have events taking place on the new moon because you'll find out, we're going to find out in, in, in a little earlier, not only did Jacob, not only did Noah get off the ark in the new, on the new moon, um, uh, Jacob is starting to travel on the new moon. We're going to find out that the children of Israel did some stuff on the new moon. But it wasn't until the seventh day of the month, which is the actual date of Pentecost, when you do the math, according to Leviticus chapter 23, it falls on the seventh day of the month, which was a sacrificial day, the day before the Sabbath day. You find all of that out in that other video I keep pointing to. Pentecost uh, Septuagint proclaims different date than King James. Check out that video. You'll see how it actually falls on the seventh day of the month. When you look at the, what happened to Jacob as he was about to go into Egypt, it kind of makes sense how that was actually a sacrificial day. But if you look here and how this is written, it wasn't until the 15th day of the third month that he actually had the Feast of First Fruits. Like I said, Pentecost is a little bit harder to nail down because when you look at Jacob, he's actually celebrating first fruits or the date of Pentecost on the 15th day of the month. I know this is a little bit confusing, but it ain't my fault. The Bible, Leviticus 23, points to it on the seventh day of the month, but Jacob is doing it on the 15th day of the month. And you look back, Abraham did it on the 15th day of the month, too. And not only did they do it on the 15th day of the month, but then you look down here, there's a whole lot of events going on the 16th day of the month where they were, when they were actually were getting the Ten Commandments and all of that kind of stuff. So this is an extremely important month and probably, we probably should be writing this stuff down, but let's go on. Might have confused everybody, including myself. All right, stepping back down here in chronological order, according to the month, according to the days of the month that we was actually writing this down on a calendar, which I'll probably do in a in a video here, you know, sometime before Pentecost actually gets here. We see that the children of Israel actually left. The children of Israel also started to travel sometime around the new moon of the month. That's when they actually went into the wilderness of Sinai. You read that over in the book of Exodus chapter 19, as well as Jasher chapter 82. You see that they're actually going to the foot of Sinai. And you know that's, that's where they're actually going to get the Ten Commandments and all of that kind of stuff. Now, on or about the third day of the third month is when Moses sanctified the people. You remember, you read over there in chapter 19, verse 11, where the father told him to prepare the people to get ready to hear from the father, to hear the Ten Commandments right there under that mountain and stuff. Well, that, well, that actually started on the third day of the month. And then on the sixth day of the month is when they actually started getting the Ten Commandments. You read that over there in Exodus chapter 24 and verse 16. 
how it was on the sixth date that they actually started getting those commandments. You read that again over in Jasher chapter 82 and verse 6 that the Ten Commandments was given on the sixth day of the third month. This is a big month. We're talking about this third month. That's why there's a lot of, you know, people who are on watch, people that are keeping visual uh, for the um, um, uh, spiritual events to take place like the Great Awakening or the Rapture or the Third Temple and those kind of things. People really start to pay attention to, you know, the third month. And that's kind of why we wanted to do this video to let you know what, which days of the month some of these events will uh, take place. Even though we're not putting Gregorian calendar dates with these in this video, um, like I said, hit the subscribe button. We'll do that sometime here uh, shortly. All of these dates are sacred month dates. Dates on the month Sivan, not May, not June, but the month Sivan, which is a sacred month, which is according to the holy calendar. Now, on the seventh day of the month, the seventh day, which is actually the date of Pentecost, like we said, according to the book of uh, Leviticus, when you actually do the math and calculate it based on the date that you're supposed to calculate, it comes up on the seventh day, and that is a sacrificial day, and that is the date that Jacob made his sacrifice that we talked about earlier, found in Jubilees chapter 44 and verse 1. Now, sometime around that time, if you go in and look at the story of Moses, that is also the time about the time that Moses goes up to get the ta get the tablets, the stones, the carved stones in in with the Ten Commandments on it. Now, they had already gotten the word from the Lord at the bottom of Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb or, or whatever that mountain was. Remember the story to read there in um, um, Exodus chapter 20. Uh, Exodus chapter 21, 22, and 23. They got that whole um, lecture from the Lord there on the sixth day of the month. But then it was after that that Moses went up the mountain in order to get the commandments. You remember how he went up on the mountain and stayed for 40 days and 40 nights? And, you know, Aaron and all of them guys were down there, you know, dancing with the golden calf or whatever. So those are separate events from the time they got the covenant, which, like we said, is Exodus chapter 20 through 23 to the time that they actually got the tablets and stone was two separate events well you see in Jasher chapter 82 and verse 8 that it is around or after the seventh day of the month that he actually went on the mountain to get those and you read according to Exodus chapter 24 and 15 that he was up there for seven days before he actually started to get those um those tablets. Now, jumping back over here and looking at the Word document where it's sorted by the people instead of sorted by the day, it's sorted by the people. You can start to see that there was a pattern there where on the seventh day of the month was the sacrifice, but it was seven days later that Jacob actually got the Word of the Lord. He and the Lord appeared to him on the sixteenth day of the month. You can see there's a pattern here between what Jacob went through heading into Egypt and what Moses went through heading out of Egypt and I thought that was really significant too and if you actually look at the time span between these two events that actually shines some light on it too it is is like a certain number of jubilees that these e events took place where Jacob went in and Moses came out but then looking at how they went through similar events or similar cycle in the third month kind of shines some light on what's going on in the third month and why so many uh, I'm gonna call them rapture watchers are are so interested in this third month over in the book of Jubilees chapter 29 we can see that um, after Jacob had decided that he was going to escape Laban that he he actually ran from Laban him and his wives and all of his uh, children and his the possessions that he had acquired over those 14 years there serving Laban for his two daughters he escaped and left in the first month but Laban pursued after him you see there in verse 5 it says and Laban pursued after him and 
and overtook Jacob in the mountain of Gilead in the third month on the 13th day thereof. And see, this is the thing about um, these books like Jubilees and Jasher and some of the other books. They add additional information. You don't read in Genesis that it took them uh, two or three months for Laban to catch up with Jacob there in Gilead. But you can see that it wasn't until the third month that he actually met up with him. But all of this took place in the third month on the 13th day of the month. And we see that Isaac was also born in the middle of the third month. You can find that in Jubilees chapter 16. But you look there in Jubilees chapter 15. You see that Abraham actually celebrated the feast of first fruits in the middle of the month. In the middle of the month. Not on the seventh day of the month, but on the middle of the month. It doesn't give you the exact date. Just like down here, when you look at Jubilees chapter 15, it tells you that it was also during the middle of the month that Abraham received the promise of Isaac. He was told that Isaac was going to be born. Remember, he was surprised because he was almost a, or over 100 years old and he, his wife was over 100 years old or about 100 years old. And like, hey, how are we going to have some kids? But they got that that promise and they even was and they even got the covenant in the middle of the third month the covenant where he had to get circumcised that was actually given to him in the middle of the third month and you also see that Isaac was born in the middle of the third month you read about that over there in Jubilees chapter 16 and Isaac was weaned three years later. And we know that to be in the middle of the third month because he was weaned right around the time that Abraham was celebrating the feast of first fruits. And Abraham celebrated that feast in the middle of the month, according to Jubilees. And I think that's chapter 17. And talking about people who were born in the third month, Judah, another child of Jacob was born on the 15th day of the third month. You see that over in uh, Jubilees chapter 28. So it was around the middle of the month all of these events took place, including Moses being called out of the cloud to come and get the tables. That event happened sometime, according to Exodus uh, chapter 24 and verse 16, it happened sometime around the middle of the month, but then but then when you look at Jubilees chapter 1, you find out that it was actually on the 16th day of the month. The tablets, those stones were given to Moses on the 16th day of the month. And like we said, we're looking for patterns here. And so the 16th day of the month is emerging as a significant day. Not only did Moses get the tablets, the stone tablets on the 16th day of the month, but you look back at Jubilees chapter 44 and verse 5 that you will see it is the 16th day of the month that Jacob actually went into Egypt. The father appeared to him and basically gave him instructions on what to do. And those instructions included moving him and his whole family, about 70 people, into Egypt. You read that in verse, four, verse 8 of chapter 44, that it was on the 16th day that they actually went into Egypt. And then all of those years later, they got the commandments written in stone as they was leaving Egypt. So I found this pattern quite interesting. I hope you did as well. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. But remember to hit that bell button and that subscription button down there because we're going to continue to put classes out on this kind of stuff leading up to the date of Pentecost, which is only about a week away at this point as far as the seventh day of, of the month. And so, Lord willing, by then we will start to actually add uh, Gregorian calendar days to this because a lot of us still use the Gregorian calendar to know what day it is. So we'll take the time to actually make the correlation between the two calendars to kind of sync them up. 
In the meantime, go ahead and check out other videos we've done related to the year 2020. Um, it is promising to be an important year. We did a video called uh, Rapture of the 144,000 Chosen Elect, Third Temple, all related to the year 2020. All of that's coming out of uh, getting an understanding of the prophecies as given by uh, Daniel over there. So be sure to check that one out. Um, like I said, uh, 2020 is promising to be an exciting year in the spiritual world. All right, guys, if you got something out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, go ahead and hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. And may our Father bless you and keep you. May our Father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.